What's up guys and gals and welcome back to Surviving Mars. My name is Splattercat. Very happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and continue to develop our little badass colony. We've got some good things going on. We're trying to get our power grid all nice and squared away right now. We ordered a whole bunch of stuff from the home world because we knew it would help. Uh, we needed a whole bunch more prefabs. We needed to make our power situation a little bit better. Basically, I think if we focus on the power front and we focus on the water front, we should be in good shape by the end of this. Uh, along that lines, we actually we got in some devaporizers, I guess, or vaporators or something like that. I don't really know. It collects water molecules out of the air, and I think it adds to your overall load of water, essentially. And then down here, we got some independent power generation, which I think is going to help us out a lot. So right here, we have string generators. Maintenance costs us one of our polymers, but these are pretty good right here. These are pretty solid. And so it just produces power. You don't need to feed it anything or anything else like that. And these are kind of cool because they've got kind of like an eggshell pattern where like they open along the top. And when they open along the top, you can close them and shut them down if there's going to be a dust storm or anything like that because they are very weak. Uh, they're quite weak to... What is that going to cost me? I'm sorry, I wasn't even looking right there. What is that going to cost me? It's going to consume five power. Maintenance is going to be two right there. Eh, we got the stuff for it. I mean, we don't really need to mess around with it too much. I think I'll probably start slotting these in along this line right here. We've got three of them, so we might as well get them into play now. Did I put those one space back? No, those should be lined up right. I think they look okay. I've got, what, two, three spaces in between each one? There we go. We'll make them look a little bit nicer. I think those vaporators are going to help out. Basically, we brought back a whole bunch of stuff that's going to make our lives much easier as we go forward. It's going to take load off of pretty much everything that we have going on right now. Construction site, this building will be constructed by drones. Let me make sure that I'm using these properly. I've actually never used the vaporators. So we have prefab parts for the building. I can actually look it up, too, in the encyclopedia. If we don't get the information that we want, you can go to the encyclopedia right here. I haven't showed this out a whole lot just yet. But the moisture vaporator... There it is. So, production is lower. Produces water from the atmosphere. No production during dust storms. They provide limitless, albeit slower, and energy-consuming supplies of water once ore deposits are no longer, or once water deposits are no longer a viable option. So actually, we may need to space these out a little bit further before we get those going. Nobody's put down the prefabs, though. Yeah, I didn't see the rings around them. Let's try that again to make sure that we do this properly. I don't want to... These are a big boon for us. And I don't want to waste them. And so if we can get them just outside of each other's reach here... Is that lined up? I don't want to waste these. I've got this nightmarish feeling that I'm going to come back in just a minute. And they are all going to be just bric-a-brac all messed up. And it's going to be upsetting. We've got no cable connection on that side. Uneven terrain on that side. We're going to have to build another pipe network in order to get that one to work. Just because we don't really have any room to slot it in down. I suppose I could put it in right there. Yeah, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and slide that one in right there. And hopefully that will give us enough water to last us a while. I don't want to bring colonists here if they're just going to land on the planet and be like, Ack, I'm dying, and then fall over after declaratively saying that that's what's happening. And I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Like, I'm not good at helping other people survive. I'm just, I'm not. I'm not good at it. Why are they offloading the stuff from that rocket out of this rocket? Maybe it's because I never had any storage areas for it before. That's probably why. This rocket's about ready to go. By the end of this episode, this rocket's going to take off back for Earth. When it goes back to Earth, it's going to pick up our first batch of colonists, which I think is going to be just really, really awesome. I think it's going to be pretty fun. These are prefabs. They should be done pretty shortly. Like, I don't know how long it's going to be before the prefab gets done, but meh. We could prioritize them, but I'm not really that stressed about it. On the load that we got from here, we got a whole bunch of electronic parts. We got a whole bunch of polymers and a whole bunch of other little things. That are, they're going to allow us to do our maintenance because that's what was getting us into trouble is we just didn't have the maintenance supply to make stuff happen. That's bad. We, we don't want to run out of any of these materials because every time we run out of these materials, we can't repair a building. And if that building cable has not been... Reported. Oh, goody, a cable fault. If that building is not being repaired properly, it's not producing for us. And we're kind of at that point where we've got like a razor-thin problem with the way everything's running. we got to make sure that we stay on top of it. I don't see any metal around here anywhere. Do we have any metal deposits left? We gotta have one around here somewhere. Yeah, go pick up those metal deposits right there. I don't know if that's outside the RC range of what we're able to do, but I'm gonna give it a go 
anyways, and I'm gonna see what happens when we push this out here. I did save my game right before I did this, so I'm just trying to make sure that... Oh, he can go wherever he wants to then. Grab that metal. Grab that metal. Our rocket is ready to go. Fully fueled. Let's get this thing back up and into orbit. Go ahead and launch. These guys right here, they're pretty much done. Uh, all we have to do is after this takes off, it's going to kick off a bunch of dust and I don't want it to mess up my stuff. Hey, we launched a rocket from Mars. We're the best at everything. Yay! Hooray for us. Uh, now I can unfold these and they will start to generate some more power. Let's have a look at our grid. We're at 88.8. .8. That's going to drop off a little bit at night because these guys are not producing at a rate that's going to be super satisfactory. However, I'll take a look and figure out if I need more batteries pretty soon, but I think these Sterling generators are going to be a really good acquisition for us. These guys over here are producing a little bit more water. Not a lot, but some. They're on the grid and they're doing their thing, and so we're above our demand right now, which is pretty much all you can ask for. That's producing one. This one over here, our entire grid is 3-2. It's... Our water tanks are full, though, so even if the whole thing goes wrong... Oh, yeah, we're not done with our sector scans yet. Let's go ahead and keep those going. I don't want to be inefficient here, and I want to make sure we... Oh, we've got something going on. We have homes prepared for all of our colonists right now. I wanted to give them some amenities before they arrived, though, just so things are a little bit smoother. We've got playgrounds. We've got a nursery. I personally think a hospital is a really good idea. Like, if we have an infirmary, so what does the security station do? Also, what is a security case station going to cost me? So it's 15 concrete and a little bit of that right there. That's going to be 9 people. We can afford to bring back 32. I think each one of these right here holds 12, 14 people. So, we, yeah, we can bring back 42. Sorry. Forgot to carry a 1 right there. We've got a building that's not working. Oh, that's just because he's overloaded. Don't even stress about that. Not even a big deal. Are you done with your pull of metal over here? If you're done with your pull of metal, let's go ahead and we'll drop that metal off right there. My suggestion would be that we salvage both of these to save space, and then we'll move all the metal back into the stockpile because I've got a sneaking suspicion we're not really going to need it. Those are temporary paddocks right there. Don't worry about those going anywhere or causing any problems. Those are essentially just as soon as you pick the stuff up right there, it'll disappear. We've got one more rocket going back to Earth. That's a very advantageous place to be for us. I'm happy with our progress so far. Uh, this is not entirely a blind playthrough, but anytime I go into a series like this, I'm always a little bit nervous about my performance. People are very critical. People are very mean. And so, you know, I'm trying to filter that out of my life right now. So with 42 people, we could technically... So we need... For the mine, I think we need 4 per shift, so 12. For some of the other stuff, we're definitely going to need to get some things done here. The infirmary, I think, is going to be a really good idea. A dome with a medical building has a lower minimum comfort required for births. And so what I would do is let's just put this guy in... Oh, I don't know. We've got three spaces right there that we're able to that we're able to exploit. I'm going to say to put the infirmary in right there. We have the stuff that we need in order to make the infirmary. A security station seems like a really good idea. Uh, there are other things that I think we can produce through here somewhere. Like we've got playgrounds, we've got research labs. If I wanted to produce, so for polymer factories and stuff like that, we're actually going to have to bring stuff back from Earth for that to work. And that's a little bit of a bummer, and it doesn't have me like super excited, but, you know, we're going to do what we got to do out here. We're going to do what we have to do. Concrete's looking good, fuel refinery's doing its thing, so we should have an easy out here as things go along. They are loading up fuel and they're getting all that stuff done as we go through our game. We've got stacks and stacks of fuel over here right now. We're not running it at night to save on the water grid. Man, I can't believe how little water we're getting right now. It really is kind of upsetting. We are not getting a lot of water. I may be able to destroy this and scoot it back to get a better water pull maybe? Like, if I can get it right on top of that thing, we might be able to do better with it. And so, that's one of the things... Oh, good, our Vaporator research got done. So, with our Vaporator research, uh, their water production has increased by 50%. Hell to the yes. And so, that's going to help out a little bit more as well. However, I think we are going to need a lot of these things if we're going to make this whole thing functional. I don't know if hooking pipes up to every single one of these is actively going to help. I have my doubts about it, but maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't really know. Let's go grab the rest of that metal right there and keep things cleared out. And I think the next thing that we want to get on board with is a metals extractor right here. I want people to be able to, you know, do their Sector jobs once we get that found. done. We found another anomaly. I suppose that's a good thing. I don't know that that's a good thing. I hope it's a good thing. But the power grid is going to be kind of interesting because some of these areas are outside our realm of influence.
Actually, it looks like that worked out okay. Looks like that worked out to the best of our ability the way that we wanted it to. We do have a thing called a tunnel over here. Like, we have a tunnel inside one of these. And I don't know if that's for, maybe it's infrastructure. So, a tunnel entrance and exit can connect power and life support grids at different locations and at different elevations. Rovers can travel along the tunnels to reach places they otherwise couldn't. Okay. So, I don't know if that's used to go through, like, mountainous areas. Or, I guess if I look at it, it looks like we place one end around here and then we place the other end somewhere else so people can make mass transit from one location to the next. That's working right there. What building's not working? Oh, that's because it has nobody working there. That makes a lot of sense that it's not working. I think it's good that we have a police force and we make sure that people feel safe inside of our dome. And so that's going to cost us a little bit more concrete and a little bit more metal. But I think that's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make for my people. For all of my people. We have two buildings not functioning now. He's overloaded with concrete. That's the problem to have. I'm not really too concerned about having way too much concrete. We'll offload that in just a minute. Instead, I'm trying to allow him to do his thing. He's got 30 storage right now, so this dude is like a heavy lifter for us. Our supplies are looking like we have plenty of metal. We have a decent amount of concrete. I don't really care altogether that much that we're getting stuck on some of our production lines right there because we have a surplus that's going to make things a lot easier. Those require maintenance fairly frequently. So... It's a little unexpected, but I think I can live with it. As long as I want to give it a day or two, like a soul or two, just to see if we can keep the grid up and doing its thing for right now without things falling apart horribly. Like if we can go like a week or like three or four days without any of the power or any of the water going out, that's in my opinion when we know we're going to be ready for people to move in. Uh, the dome is drawing what power it's going to draw. You know what I mean? The fabs are drawing what they're going to draw as far as power is concerned as well. So water and power, I think, are mostly taken care of. But it's one of those things that until we dive into the deep end, we don't really know. Now that our rocket is back up in space, how long does it take it to get back to Earth? So here we go. The rocket capacity is 12. Now the first 12 people that we want to bring along, in my opinion, are going to mostly be geologists. So, they have an interest in drinking and a minus in relaxation. That's very, very true. Uh, geologists are heavy, heavy drinkers. I've never met a geologist. I studied geology in college. And every geologist I knew was a heavy drinker. By far. Like, there's nothing else to do. You're out on a field survey in the middle of nowhere. Like, you're like two hours from the nearest village. Like, there's nothing else to do but sit around the campfire and drink when you get back from doing your work. That's pretty much it. I would like to take... So, we've got ten right there. Let's review. We have geologists. So that's a male adult. He's from Germany. We've got France. We've got all kinds of goodies up inside of here. Lots and lots of people from the EU, but I guess that makes sense. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let's approve some geologists. Uh, we'll take eight of them and we'll work two shifts at the mine for right now. We'll take eight geologists and we'll work two shifts at the mine. We'll go back. And now that we got our geologists taken care of, we're going to need security staff and we're going to need medical staff. So with our medical staff, let's review. We've got Gerda, recover sanity when gaming. Okay. Uh, alcoholic, work performance lowered by 10, sanity breakdowns. We probably don't want to introduce that to our situation. Uh, I'd like to stick with mostly positive perks. Enthusiast, gains twice as much. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll get Perlind. We will take Charles Benjamin. And I think we'll take the Gamer as well because that's one of those things that, like, there's no downside to that. We've got three more colonists approved. I didn't know... I thought it already approved the geologists. Okay, so let's go through the geologists and we'll see what we can do here. Uh, that guy's lazy, so obviously I don't think we want him. That's a 50% when visiting a casino. We don't have a casino, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. We have Leon Kohler. We have Isaac Benjamin. Basically, I'm looking for a very short list of people right now. We've got Composed. All sanity losses are halves. Additional comfort and social interest. Enthusiast. Yeah, that sounds good. Nicole Sandberg. will randomly visit hypochondriac. Okay. Nerd. Morale boost every time we get new. And we've got Loner. Comfort every day while living in a dome with a population over 30. Okay, so we probably don't want to invite that to our dome. Uh, Renee Alphonse is sexy, so apparently we're going to bring her along, I guess. 
So we've approved six. I think we'll probably pick up a couple more people in here. So workaholic. Individual performance increased by 20. No penalty for heavy workloads. All right. And we've got a botanist, an engineer. We've got people with no specialization for right now. Why is no specialization on the list? Hold on, I'm doing this wrong. I've got to be doing this wrong. All right, so we want... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this off camera, don't worry. So we need security staff, we need geologists, and we need medics. All right, I'll get back with you once I've reviewed all the applicants. Okay, so I've got us our security detail. We've got officer, officer, geologist right there. Uh, we've got geologist, geologist, medic, geologist, geologist, medic. We should have enough for a couple of shifts here. So let's go ahead and launch. We're going to bring these people on over, and when they arrive, hopefully everything turns out well. Uh, we haven't loaded really anything over here just yet. This guy, what are you loaded up with? Metal? Yeah, he's got a truckload of metal ready to go. He's over here, Phantom 409. Drop that thing off right there. Perfect. And on this side, we are not really loading much fuel to this end. But we are going to need to... Battery low. Vehicles with low power, huh? All right, well, if you're low on power, go ahead and recharge thyself. I assume he puts up, like, a little... I don't know. How does he recharge himself? Select a power cable or other vehicle to recharge the battery. K. Okay. Go ahead and power on up right there. Jack on in, amigo. It's time for your time in the Matrix. And so here comes our first colonist. I think this is going to be pretty rad. I'm going to take this right here, and we put that on high priority. I'll probably offload the fuel into it using this guy in just a minute. How fast is his battery charge? Pretty quick. What's his power drain? Not much. Okay. Sounds good. Now that he's all Tesla'd up, let's bring him back on down here. He's going to grab all of this fuel because we have a buttload of it. So let's grab as much as we can. It looks like we actually have 32 fuel. So we're almost ready to take some of these people back. And uh, we're almost ready to get this one back up into orbit. And I think that's a very, very good thing. Let me go ahead and drop that off right there. Cool. We've got our little fuel repository. Hopefully someone will come along in the near future and grab this stuff and make it work for us. We're producing fuel at a very, very good rate right now, and I'm happy with our production quantities. I think we should be able to keep, like, a constant flow of ships going in and out. I don't know what our cash is looking like right now. We've got $3.5 billion left in the budget. And so as things get done, we're almost done with advanced Martian engines. That'll lower the amount of rockets and shuttle fuel that we need, which I think is really, really good. And that should happen within the next day or so. I'm hoping that we'll get a solid payout from right there. We have low-G fungi. I think farming is going to be a really good idea. And in fact, I think it's a good enough idea that I'm going to deprioritize drone research to focus on it. Uh, we should probably also put geologists in there as well for productivity training. So we'll, we'll line things up, but I think farming is going to be a really good idea as well. Otherwise, we may run into some issues. So our demand is five. Our production is five. Rough one. Very, very rough one. I wish that we had better water production, but not producing due to a lack of demand. Can produce one more if required. Oh, well, that would explain it as well. I was wondering why it was shifting its productivity so randomly. Grab that real quick, too. Let's bring the fuel back over here. This little guy is just loading up the shuttle. Go ahead and drop off the sources right there. And I want to get this guy back up and into orbit about as soon as possible because I'd like to make another supply run uh, whenever I can. If I can grab a supply run, what's our resources looking like right now? Uh, we're a little bit low on electronics. We're not that low on fuel, so I'm going to leave that alone for right now. That dude's recharging himself. We've got another anomaly. We have pipe leaks and a whole bunch of other stuff going on. Uh, as soon as you guys get done with the fuel offloading, deprioritize that and get back in there and fix all of our infrastructure issues. Right now, infrastructure is becoming a problem. And so refuel that when you get a chance. Get down here, offload some stuff, do your thing, and hopefully that'll be all right. We have our radio right here. We have our milestones. I'm still kind of curious where I go to assign drones to their jobs. Like, I'm a little bit interested in that. Like, I thought that I was going to have a menu around here somewhere where I can assign I can assign drones to various jobs so that they can prioritize. Like, you go, you're a hauler. You know what I mean? You're producing fuel. You're over here doing maintenance all the time. Like, I want my drones to each have a job that they are responsible for. How's the offloading going over here? with this building we've got 20 right there good oh our po our people have arrived fantastic they will bring food with them 12 food i i don't really know how that's going to help me out but let's get these colonists in here shall we 
If I kill off my first batch, I suppose I can live with that. We got 200 million for getting that research done right there. Uh, low G fungi should be done pretty soon. I don't know if we have to have, so for our, let's say, production. Full of hope and determination. The first founders have set foot on the red planet. The next 10 souls will be full of difficulties and dangers, but also with great promises and opportunities. It is now to us to prove that Mars can be a gateway to greater riches and the future of human civilization. Even the most epic adventures begin with a single step. Arrival of additional colonists, temporarily suspended until the colony proves it's able to sustain human life. Your founder colonists have to survive for 10 souls before additional people can arrive. The colony will be evaluated positively before the period ends in the event that the first human is born on Mars. If you feel you are up to the challenge, try constructing a medical building and raising the comfort of the founder founders as much as possible in the service buildings. Milestone achieved. Sounds good to me. We have security staff. It looks like they're already doing their New thing. Colonists have arrived. And so we have shifts around the clock with our security. Uh, that's a geologist. So I don't know. Can I remove some of these people? There we go. So take the geologists off. I'm okay with having officers right there. I assume they fill in with jobs that they want to do. So we have medical staff right here. We have geologists working as medics. I don't think that's going to help out very much. But we'll take it one step at a time. We'll take it one step at a time. It looks like they autofill on a certain level. So there's our security staff right there. As soon as the mine is up and running, uh, we just need we just need more people over here. And that's going to be producing what looks like 7.3 metal per soul. That's not a lot, but it's something. It's better than what we had going on before, which is me just mining random surface rocks. And so I think I can deal with that for right now. We also have a pretty good surplus of metal right now, which has me not altogether that concerned about the various things that need to take place. Uh, the big thing that I'd like to focus on for right now is getting ourselves some food grown. We've got a hydroponic farm over here. There's only one work shift right here. I didn't bring any biologists over. But I think it's too far from the dome. Requires a dome. Oh, it's got to go inside. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and put that in right there then. It's not going to take too much to get that built. Just four metal and a couple of polymers. But we should be all right. Let's go ahead and check on our power grid very rapidly to make sure that everything is right where it needs to be. That looks fantastic, and I'm not worried about it at all. Uh, colonists will go to buildings to increase their comfort, and it looks like, yeah, they're actively, like, doing their own thing right now. There are undeveloped areas. I would assume it would be kind of lonely and a little bit claustrophobic to be the first person in this area, but, you know, one thing at a time. Uh, so for our survivor stage, we've got nine souls and four hours left. I don't have the workers to fill this out. I would love to bring in just like a bunch of botanists. I think I need like three in order to do the botany jobs. And then we can use that to fill in all the other jobs too. So we need like, you know, we need a couple more geologists to get this thing going. So with you guys right here, we have one work shift. We've stopped that work shift right there. People are adding and leaving this job and I'm not sure why. And it looks like they're filling in elsewhere. And I really don't know why that is. Uh, colonists have several basic stats. You can monitor the condition. They need food, water, oxygen, operational service buildings. Okay. That's fine. I don't, I don't really care about that. This place's name is Brahi. I don't know if I like that or not. I kind of want to change the name of it. Let's change the dome name. This place is going to be called Space Vallejo. There it is. We're in Space Vallejo. Yay! Space Vallejo. I'm sure the police department will run out of any money. The, the police department will run out of money at any moment, and crime will reign supreme. Uh, building performance is 34, so yeah, we're definitely going to need some more people to get dropped off before this is all going to function. We have a little bit of food being produced. Not a lot. Little bit. We're growing leafy crops, which is going to give us 10 food. Is that listed in here? We have 12 food right there. How long you figure that's going to take for that one production run to go through? These people are not doing their normal no. job, but it seems like people just kind of fill in and do whatever they want to do. I'm assuming that there's a setting around somewhere where I can be like, yo, do the jobs that you're assigned to, and if not, just wander around freely and have fun with your life, but I suppose that... I don't know. I just don't know. This place is going to need maintenance pretty soon, so we have food, we have security, we have medical services available. Not too bad. Not too bad. So, Sector E1... Our colonists are starving. 
Uh, constant supply of fresh nutrients is vital to the survival of the colony. The colonists can go on for some time before they, sutter, they suffer more adverse effects from the lack of food, but if you don't feed them soon, they're gonna die. Colonists with a starving status effect have no access to food. Deliver food from Earth or produce it by farming to supply... Okay. Uh, they brought 12 food with them, didn't they? We still have 12 food, so... I'm gonna make a big ol' assumption right there. I don't know if I need a food repository or something like that. Slow the game down for a second. I don't know if I need, like, a central food storage or something. Is there a food storage inside of here? We have a food depot. Oh, it goes outside the building. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, put in a couple of food paddocks right there. I don't know if they go out and they get it, or how do I feed them? Maybe I need a special building to do that. Let's go ahead and have a look. This is about where my tutorial ended that I was looking into. We've got a nursery, we've got a living quarters, we have a diner. Uh, so this is consumption, serves the finest dishes, featuring non-plastic ware, or non-plastic tableware. It needs workers, though. Distributes hot meals and fresh produce. That might be our guy right there. That might be the one that we need. Go ahead and build the grocer, and I need that to be prioritized, like, right now. It's only 10 concrete. It should be able to get done pretty fast. Where's my rover at? Uh, where did my rover go? I didn't think about that. I thought they would just go eat food all by their lonesomes, and that would be perfectly fine, and we wouldn't have to concern ourselves with it. Our crop right now, we've got nine food that's in production. That's going to take growth time is four souls. I don't think they're going to make it that long. I really sincerely don't think they're going to make it that long. Uh, let's prioritize food growing for right now and make sure that we got that going on. That's going to be nine food per four souls. I don't know if they need to eat like every single day or whatever. I don't know what the space is going to be, but we're out of time for the day anyways. My name is Splattercat. Welcome to Surviving Mars, uh, where actually I might have made a big mistake right here by not having like a food distribution platform before things fell apart. I think they ate. I think. They did. They all ate food. Well, that's good. I think I just needed to unload the food right there. And it looks like they went and they took care of it. Everybody's good now. Yay, we weren't dying, but now we're not dying. I'll see y'all next time. If you want to get the game, it's down below in the description along with my Twitter page and also my Twitch page. If you wanted to hang out live and get a little bit more personal. I will see you later. Thank you for stopping on in. Hi, do everybody.